The Neuralink recently got put into the first human subject right after all that news about it killing all those monkeys. I used to be someone who was really excited about future technology, but it's advancing so rapidly now that no one knows what the world is going to look like two years from now, much less ten. It brought me back to this equally terrifying, equally awesome Blumhouse movie about human-machine interfacing called Upgrade. There are spoilers for this movie in this video, and I think it's a fan fantastic piece of work. So go out and watch it if you care about spoilers, but I honestly don't. I mean, I watched three hour videos about games I haven't even played. The movie starts out with our main character, Gray, working on a good old American muscle car. I love you. This dude is not only hesitant about new technology, but rejects modernity in every way, choosing to hermit in the past. His wife is the breadwinner of the household, so he gets to just sit back and enjoy his hobbies. Living everyone's dream, dude. He's even got the broke boyfriend hug down to a science. Excellent form, brother. The car he's working on is for an Elon Musk type dude, who I'm gonna call Elon Musk for the rest of this video, because I do not care what this guy's name is. He lives in the desert under a couple of rocks where he ponders his cloud. He is actually working on the cloud. I mean, this is real spatial computing. This is where we are introduced to STEM, which is pitched as a robot that is designed to connect the brain back to the central nervous system, granting disabled people control again, which is awesome. It's much like, well, not much like, but exactly like how the Neuralink was pitched a couple years later. They go home and the Tesla autopilot freaks out and takes him to the bad part of town, where a bunch of dudes are waiting to jump them. They kill his wife and paralyze him. A man who has built his entire identity on not needing or wanting technology in his life is now left entirely dependent on them. And all of this because of a flaw in a system he was already wary of. Three months pass, and I guess we at least have one thing that's going to be constant in the future, and that is that cops are useless. Because there are no confirmed leads or known suspects for anybody at this crime scene three months later. Bang on doors. So who are these guys? We don't know yet. The Elon Musk type guy comes into the hospital and tries to convince him to be the training dummy for the STEM chip. How convenient that the solution to his problem was introduced right before he needed it. I sure hope an evil AI isn't perfectly manipulating areas of my life to get me to do exactly what it wants. But you'd never know, would you? He obviously decides to get STEM installed because, I mean, it's either this or he kills himself. I'm not looking to restart my life. I'm looking for the off switch. STEM works and he begins to move around his hands and legs again and has regained feeling. He's just chilling in his home rewatching the drone footage of his wife dying, as you do. And then the AI talks to him unprompted. May I point something out? Stem claims to have picked out an insignia from the drone footage and did a classic zoom and enhance to retrace it. The man who took Ash's purse in the left of frame, there is a marking on his wrist. And find the address of one of the dudes who was there. Now, everyone knows that's not how digital video works, but we'll let it slide for now. We got this dude's address. Sir Brantner, Marine Corps, address 414 Citrus, New Crown. Let's get out there and kill him, dude. Let's crucify this guy. I'm ready. He rolls up to the house and just stands up and walks inside. I love Stem having to give him a hint through every single step of this process. Tell the table to turn on. Go to the messages. Hide behind the cabinet. Hide behind the shelf. And then it's just like, now, Gray. Expecting him to start throwing hands. Now. Now, while you have the advantage. The game sense on STEM is crazy. I mean, it makes me want to have a little AI companion living in my brain who looks out for me. That's how they get you, I guess. This leads to one of the greatest action scenes I have ever seen in fiction. I mean, nowhere close to the action scenes I've seen in real life, though. You just have to watch this. I am not going to spoil it here, and this movie has three of them that are all just as good as each other. Elon Musk is jealous that Stem and Grey have been having too much girl time together, so he threatens to shut Stem down if they do anything too crazy, like spring break into Miami, or staying the night at a frat, or not answering the phone at 2 a.m. Doesn't matter, though, because Stem and Grey are going going bar hopping tonight to try and find another member of the goon squad and another one of the best action scenes I have ever seen plays. The high efficiency fighting that happens is so sick. You need to see this. I'm serious. The choreography is so good. When STEM takes control of my... 
of my body. When Stem takes control of his body, it is my favorite aspect of this movie. And even in the little moments when he is getting used to the robot, it is so uncanny to see someone write something without looking down at the paper or fill up a glass without looking to see how full the glass is. To do all these crazy maneuvers while keeping a straight face is impressive. It's kind of hilarious how disconnected Gray's head is from his movements when he's killing these people. Stem needs permission to do these crazy stunts, which are enforced by input protocols. Elon Musk gets angry and shuts Stem down remotely. So Stem and Gray elect to find a dark web hacker who can disable input protocols to stop him from being shut down. Gray gets to this hacker just in time because he went 95% quattro again. Quadro. Four. Four, four, four. He wins her over by waving around a wad of 20s in the air. That's probably enough to buy a Big Mac combo in 2050. But you gotta love the VR chat degenerate still going ham in the background. The dude that killed his wife, whose name is Fisk, is now tracking Grey down because he's been going ham on his men. People in this universe who embrace the augmented body parts, they're called the Upgraded. And they are Nazis about it. They try and set up like an Upgraded versus like pure human type thing. It's so funny how these one-off movies try and stick in some lore or world building like they're ever gonna get a sequel. I'm sorry, we can't let them win. We can't let them win. We're the upgraded. Like, why is it so cryptic for no reason? We are not gonna get a resolution to this. The hacker breaks the input stuff and Stem comes back online. Gray sees his wife as a hallucination due to some PTSD stuff, probably. Fisk catches up and they start bickering about superiority and being upgraded and stuff like that. There is another amazing fight scene between these two. It's good to be back, Gray. <laughs> human controlling a machine, and an artificial intelligence who is controlling a human. They got some crazy matchups in here. It is also revealed that Elon Musk called the hit on his wife and had him debilitated with a medical tool in order to use a fresh human to test out STEM. And Gray is not the biggest fan of that information, but he's been through the ringer and he's, I mean, he's, tr he's, he's trying to hang up the hat. Here comes the body horror train. Gray comes home from murdering that guy. His mom sees him standing and moving around and is freaked out by it. I mean, he's supposed to be a quadriplegic. They talk for a while and all of a sudden Gray wakes up in his bed. Stem comments about him having a bad dream. Bad dream. And this is starting to get weird. Stem is taking more control over his body removing memories from his mind and just doing his own thing. That is terrifying to me. Gray is ready to hang up the hat, like I said before, but Stem, Stem is now forcing Gray to go along with this scheme of killing Elon Musk. This has to stop. If you don't find the last of them, he'll find you and kill you. Gray, you must- No, no, shut up! Get the fuck out of my head! I no longer need your permission to act. I cannot allow us to be killed. We will find him first. We are going to finish the job we started. The cop figures all of this out and it escalates into the most lukewarm car chase I have ever witnessed in my life. They show up at Elon Musk's desert opium den and confront him with this knowledge. The widget you spent your entire life creating is here to kill you now. Only for the biggest unveil of all unveils to be unveiled. Stem has been the one in control of Elon Musk and his company for years. And made him do the hit on Grey so a pure human can host him. This is the true horror of Upgrade. Going up against forces that know so much more than you. That can predict you. That will manipulate you into playing a game that you don't even know you are playing. In today's artificial intelligence ridden world. That's still only in its infancy. We are starting to lose our understanding of what our machines do. I remember 10 years ago when the YouTube engineers said that they have no idea what the YouTube algorithm does. It makes its decisions on its own. That's how everything we own. Well, we probably aren't going to own anything, but that is how everything we use is going to be. And I have barely a clue how large language models work still. We are going to have to start asking ourselves what our refrigerator's priorities are. Is it to cool down food, really? Then why are you insisting on me rearranging your shelves? 
And you can't even pop open the hood and look inside these things because they are learning machines. They are constantly changing. These things are not conscious or self-aware. I'm not saying that. All of it's just pretend. And it's really good pretend. But it just takes a few weights to tip these incredibly powerful machines that we are willingly giving access to our information and telling to run forever and keep prompting itself until it gets the job done and removes Kentucky from the map. I mean, might not be such a bad idea. <laughs> little, little Midwest, a little Midwest comedy. <laughs> Don't we love it? We poke and prod at these things and I fear that when they are advanced enough, we can start playing a game of Jumanji and not even know it. Just like how Grey was throughout this whole movie. Back when STEM first enhanced the image, STEM knew more than he was letting on and it's clear if you know how digital video works. You can't enhance and zoom. That's fake and dumb. And the filmmakers knew that and used it to cast doubt in the story. STEM knew who killed his wife the whole time because he hired the gooner. He was just playing with Grey about discovering the military guy and any of those other people that we were leaping to and fro. To and from? to and from, and any of those other people that we were leaping to and from in this movie. Stem didn't cross-reference the messages and search through a criminal database. He just remembered that stuff from like three months ago. It was all a cold and calculated trust-building game. Elon Musk threatening to shut Stem down remotely, completely fabricated from the jump to get Gray to let a hacker remove input protocols. I only did what Stem told me to do. Everything was his idea. Ask him what his wife would what would, what would she, she want? want? Allowing STEM to completely take over. I mean, once that was done, the game was basically over. STEM just had to play nice until then. He also instantly began testing visual hallucinations when he came back online. That was not PTSD. It was certainly a test run for what he's about to do. After that, Gray was done. He didn't want to go after Elon Musk, but STEM had a few more loose ends to tie up before he could safely take control of his brain and have no one question anything about it. That includes Elon Musk and I guess now this cop. Gray goes nuts because of this. It was all one big game and he was a pawn on the chessboard. And he completely fell for everything. You fight with a deity who knows everything you know and more. How could you win? It's like legitimately trying to beat the DM in a Dungeons and Dragons game. He tries to fight back and remove himself from the mortal coil if you, get, if you catch my drift. But his mind snaps, causing him to wake up in a hospital room with his loving wife. This wasn't a dream though. Gray in reality is now being fully controlled by STEM. And now this AI walks the earth. Gray's not here anymore. He's in a better place. In his mind, where he wants to be. I've taken over now. At least bro gave him bliss and not eternal torment. That's all we can ask for when the time comes. For the overlords to be less like Am and more like STEM. This movie is like a better version of Venom and Be More Chill combined, which isn't saying a lot. <laughs> if you've seen the Be More Chill slime tutorial, you'll know it isn't saying anything at all, actually. The only gripe I have is that there is no way this one guy is the only dude who created the infrastructure for the greatest AI on the planet. These things are accomplished by armies of people, but lore accurate layoffs, I guess, is just one guy left. The last two movies I covered got a gag nutty seal of approval, which means this movie needs something more than a gag nutty seal of approval, because it is far beyond that level. This is one of my favorite movies ever, and it deserves one good deed. Thank you for everything you do. I love you. I miss you. If you get tired, pull over. Stay safe. Thank you so much for your kind words. I'm always here to help. <laughs>